Hey y'all, hey. Hey y'all, hey. Hey y'all, hey. I'm gonna try to get through this one without crying. Let me go ahead and grab my little tissues because I was like, should I grab the tissues? Should I wait? You know, because I don't want, you know, I was like, but um, just thinking about the effectual fervent prayer, right? And I, I said that in my last, I know I'm gonna cry. Whew, I'm gonna try not to, but in my last video, one of them, I said something about the factual fervent prayer of a righteous man and face to face and all of that. Y'all, excuse this, um, this music in the background. Y'all know uh, radio stations don't be having no good gospel stations, so I just play whatever. But the Holy Spirit led me to dig into this scripture not knowing that I was going to end up communicating with a friend of mine and we were going to end up living out this exact scripture right here um James 5 and 16 that says confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed then the next part of that scripture which is the part that <laughs> it's so mind-blowing because God is so intentional the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Y'all, let's dig into this. What does effectual mean? Effectual just means to pray with confidence that God will answer. Hebrews 11 and 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's just simply believing God is real and listening and knowing that by his mercy, he'll come through. That it's no goodness of our own, you know, that he's going to answer our prayers, you know, um, because the, the end of it says of a righteous man availeth much. So I was like, Lord, does it mean that I have to be doing everything right in order for, for my prayers to be answered? But it's not by works are we saved. It's, it's, it's not by our works. We are saved by grace. We are saved by grace. Um, and not to live on grace. Because there are some people, just like when I was studying this, it was saying how some how how we go into synagogues and we pray before people, but you know, really, our hearts aren't fervent. Our hearts aren't effectual and fervent. It's it's for show. So let me continue. Um, a fervent prayer is that model of passionate and sincere calling out to God, whether out of thankfulness, repentance, or need. So whether it's just a, a, a prayers of gratitude, prayer saying, God, forgive me, or God, I need this, it's still based upon believing that God is real and that he hears us and by his mercy he's going to come through for us um the next thing I put was um fervent means having or displaying a passionate intensity hot burning or glowing with passion or burning fire um intensity fueled by the holy spirit it can be inward and outward like um i was convicted i want to say last week or the week before because i was saying telling my friend i was telling my i was like you don't pray for me you don't pray for me and he was like just because you don't see me praying like you be praying out loud yes i do because praying ain't just saying it out loud praying can be worshiping unto the lord you know, praying can be just spending time in meditation. Praying can be praying inside of your heart, but it's the intensity of, of what you're doing and what you're saying unto the Lord that makes it fervent. Um, and I think about like when something is being fermented, it's just sitting and the longer it sits, the stronger it is. You know, so something may have been to translate that, like if something has been going on for even a short period of time but it's heavy you know it's fermented and it's fervent it's fervent because it's heavy um and it's fueled by the holy spirit that's what this says and what does it mean to avail much like what does avail mean it means to help or benefit to use or to take advantage of leading to god's intervention so i just i made it through this without crying but um the factual fervent confess your sins and faults one to another and pray for one another that we may be healed we all have something and now because this black and mild thing y'all know i keep talking about it 
because Lord knows I've never, I'm like, Lord, in my whole life and in my walk with you, when I put my mind to something, when I tell God, this is it, when I tell God and I make a commitment and a covenant with him, I stick to it. And it has been hard, I'm telling y'all. It's been hard. And God has encouraged me along this whole journey. And he even told me, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You know, you just continue to walk with me. He heals us as we go. Um, and so many things can be shameful, you know. And I'm like, Lord, I'm just so tired of the shame. I'm so tired. And it's just me being vulnerable. And I'm going to post this because it's breakthrough for me. Because oftentimes I feel like I am struggling. And I'm going through stuff. And because people so much have wanted to shame me for so long. No matter how um, my efforts are to do right. And I don't judge people when they are going through their things. And I try to be present with other people. And try to be support. And then I get rejected or turned away. Because I don't really want your support. I just want you to be okay with what I'm doing. I want you to be okay with it. Okay, I am okay with it. But are we changing? And if we're not, then... And we can't help each other grow then it's no need for the connection any type of ship should have movement a relationship a mentorship any type of relationship should have movement it's a ship it moves it's for transportation right um so yeah so just being vulnerable and being able to confess your sins and faults to somebody and you guys being able to pray one for another. You know, it's having somebody who you're not just saying, this is what I'm going through. And they're just like, oh, well, you know, it's just you. You know, they're not confessing anything. Just making you feel like you're the only one with a struggle or you only one going through something. Or, you know, it sometimes it ain't even a struggle. Sometimes it just can be a moment of weakness and you just need to repent. You know, confess your faults and sins to somebody and say, look, I, I failed the other day. I did this. I thought of, I, I was I was envious. Why I was um, I had a bad thought, you know, a thought of deceit. You know, I, I was deceptive or whatever. To be able to honestly come to somebody and say, listen, you're safe here. You can come to me and we can share this and we can go to God together and I will pray on your behalf. You know, um, being in an intimate relationship with with anyone and you have your person that person should be the one that you can go to and they can come to you and say i am filthy in this area and i need some cleaning i need some you know to, to clean the debris out and be able to be vulnerable with someone um it's just a valuable thing and it's a wonderful thing and i'm just grateful that god afforded me the opportunity today to share with someone and they be vulnerable enough to to be transparent with me y'all don't know how liberating that is because when you are in experiences and connection with people where you know you you just telling all of your stuff and you just being honest because you just want to move to the next place and go to the next level and the, and someone is just you know like finger pointing at you with you know narcissistically it is very narcissistic because it's like almost like i can have something over you to use against you in a way you know to make you feel in a way i don't know but i don't know what i'm saying right now i'm i'm having a therapy session <laughs> where my intent is just to talk about the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availing much and the beginning part of that scripture I didn't even think about the, the fact that it was confess your, your faults one to another and pray for one another. And it, it's just a testament to how important it's not intended for man to walk alone. So if you're ever in a situation where, yes, sometimes God takes us through seasons of isolation, but he will also send a, send a raven. He'll send a dove. He'll send whatever we need to encourage us to let us know that we are not alone when we are in seasons of isolation. But when we are not in seasons of isolation, 
it is always a wonderful feeling and it's liberating to for God to remind you that he is with you. I love y'all so very much. God loves you better, best, and the absolute most. There's nothing you can do about it. I'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks for allowing me this space.